Hello and welcome back. In one of my recent videos you would have seen, well you may have seen me testing out the new Tuatari Campax that I've got my hands on. The sex here. Which is an amazing axe and if you are interested in the video I'll put a link below. But when I bought it because of the, to cut down the cost I actually didn't buy the um, axe sheath or mask that goes with it. They do sell it with a sort of racing style uh, leather sheath, which has a Velcro strap. So um, it is quite nice and it's similar to their normal racing style masks, but um, well, it, it added to the cost. But also I thought being as this is going to be a sort of more camp or bushcraft style axe, it'd be nice to have a more traditional shaped leather sheath. So my plan is, is that I'm going to make one a um, bit more complex than the ones I've made previously. I'm gonna add a buckle to it and um, hopefully it'll turn out pretty well. So if you're interested, stick around and we'll see how I get on. So I started out by drawing, making paper templates and I drew the profile of the ax onto the paper first and then added a section around the outside for the stitching and the welt. But what I did find because this axe is so thick, it's so large, I needed to actually make the section at the top even wider to accommodate the stretch that'd be required at the top. So I subsequently made a slightly bigger, um, same profile, that actually sticks out a little bit further and that's going to accommodate the extra stretch the leather will need to get round that thicker profile. So the first step I've done is to mark out the profile onto the back side of the leather. And something else worth mentioning is that in this instance I'm using three to three and a half mil veg tanned leather. My previous sheaths were made out of a much thinner oil tanned leather. So it's easier to work and didn't require any finish, but it's not as robust as this one. So this should make a more robust sheath. So next step now will be to cut this out. So I'm just making the holes now for the um, strap attachments and I've made one, lined it up with that rivet and now I'm just making the second one through both pieces. So it's through now. I've taken the welt out because I want these two flat so I can line them up properly.
I've just marked up the insides uh, for the gluing. I'm going to use the Leathercraft cement and I've also taken the welds and on the smooth side I've just roughed it up a bit with a knife to help the glue um, stick a bit better. So I'm going to assemble it all now, put them together, glue it, clamp it and then I'll leave it overnight to sit properly before I carry on with the stitching. So it's been drying overnight. I just sanded the edges a little bit this morning. And then I've taken the edge, edging tool and run an edge around. That's the first one is just for a pattern. And then the inside one was for the stitching. And then I used the wheel marker to mark out the stitching holes. And I also just ran the edge beveler around the edges. So the next step now is to actually punch the holes for the stitching of the awl and I'll do that all by hand. Um, so the stitching only runs around the top and, and the front. I've just finished the stitching now and I'm just going to put some dye along the edge. I think it'll contrast nicely with the stitching and finish off the edges. Alrighty, that's all finished now. So what I've just, once the dye had dried, I put some mink oil on and just burnished it. Um, and it's come out really nicely. It looks, it looks a nice contrast and it also matches the stitching and the strap. So a nice thick sheath, it's come out really well. Decided not to go for rivets in the end because I like the clean lines. So very happy with the way it's turned out. And there we have it. Good sturdy leather sheath and mask for a good sturdy axe.